In two years of using ChatGPT to help me write my content for my websites, there's one key lesson that I've learned. One does not simply ask ChatGPT to create our content for us. And today's tutorial is one that I've had in the pipeline for some time, and it comes off the back of a support session I had with Vicky this morning, who's one of our members of our coaching community over at school. And I've left some information in the description if you need some help with this type of thing. What I did was show her two potential pathways a completely free pathway, of course, providing you've already got website hosting taken care of, and a slightly higher cost option that integrates Text Expander, Grammarly, and the paid version of ChatGPT. But the great news is here, we can do this entirely for free, and that's what I'm gonna show you in just a moment. But before we jump into the tutorial part of this video, it's now over to you. I'm looking at ideas for my next courses, and would you like me to expand what I'm gonna be covering today into a full or mini course? which will of course be free to all of our school community members or available to purchase via Pixlays Academy or Udemy. If you send me a email outlining what you'd like me to cover in this aspect, I'll even send you a free code for the course when it's created. That's enough of an introduction. I'm itching to show you each of the steps involved with creating a unique, well-written blog using ChatGPT. And the great news is we can speed up the entire process by about 200%, meaning that you no longer have excuses not to write blog content. Let's crack on. So I'm in koitibach.co.uk, I'm in the admin, and this is a Welsh name, and I've covered this in a couple of tutorials in the past, in particular a live feed, so thanks Vicky for allowing me to use this once again as a starting point. In our live support session, we added a new blog section. At the moment, it's still relatively empty, so we had a full discussion around how often we're going to be adding new posts to this blog, and the answer was we're going to start off with once or twice a month, but we're going to try and get the first three in here relatively quickly so this doesn't look empty. Then we're going to start building it up to a couple of times a month, and then hopefully minimally once a week. And to achieve this, we need to make sure that we're setting up something that is going to stand the test of time, as opposed to being something where you've got all of the adrenaline and enthusiasm for it now, but we can't rely on willpower alone. It needs to be a groove. It needs to be part of a process. We can see I've added a summary block here on the homepage. This will work on a carousel. So as soon as we get to the fourth blog post, we'll see some little arrows this side. The initial aim is to add at least two more blog posts like this one. Different topic, obviously. And then we have a blog section that starts to look full. But you're probably interested in finding out how I go about doing this. So we're not going to do it again, but what I am going to do is talk you through everything that we've done so far. So this is the ChatGPT thread from the very start, and I'll just talk you through what I did. So this is on the paid version for full disclosure, but it should work absolutely fine on the free version. The difference is with the, or the main difference for this type of content is the paid version has this option here, customized ChatGPT. And in this section, I'm able to explain who I am with correct spelling for my name, for the location and the company name. ChatGPT will remember all of this, so it means I don't have to go through and change any misspellings later, especially when we're working with Welsh place names, that becomes an absolute pain. I've also put in the link to my website in terms of how I want ChatGPT to respond and so additional information and a load of info in terms of how it should respond to me. But this part is crucial. I've refined this over looking at numerous third-party prompts and tweaking it and adjusting it over the last 18 months or so to get something that writes far closer to my tone of voice. I suggest that before outputting content to review it for words that include meticulously navigating realm, you probably heard, in this realm of blah, 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 blah. The one I've tried to get rid of is it's not merely, it's not only, not only, it's not just. In the UK here, we've got Marks and Spencer's M&S and the TV commercials have a certain flow to them. This indulgent dessert is not only one thing, it's also something else. You can substitute the something and something else for any word and you will find if you use ChatGPT enough, it just keeps writing those sentence structures over and over again. I've tried telling ChatGPT not to do it and it doesn't work. It's like an errant child. You tell a child, don't go and put your hand on the stove. What's the first thing that goes into their head? I wonder if I can get away with it. And as they slowly reach their hand across the stove whilst maintaining full eye contact in defiance, you know what they're going to do and you know you're going to be going to A&E within a few moments. What I found from experience is better parenting is actually to provide structure to that point instead of just saying, don't do this, this or this. And it's the same with ChatGPT. But if you were to say to a child, that stove has just been on, it's piping hot, I burnt my hand on it just a moment ago, please stay clear of it because I don't want you burning your hand, the child is far less likely to see it as a challenge and therefore is more likely to stay away from the stove. Likewise with ChatGPT, what we're trying to do is to give it examples 
that it can follow as opposed to just saying, don't do this. By asking it to review the content before printing it on screen, to review for all these words and remove them, it's a positive reinforcement. It's telling it what it should be doing, which is reviewing these words and removing them, as opposed to telling it not to include those words. Large language models and generative AI are going to get much better at this, so we won't need to do this, but at the moment, this is the best approach. You can put in the words that you want it to review and then remove, and what you can do then is copy and paste this into a text document, then have it copy and paste it into your prompt. Minimally, you'll need to put it at the start, and I don't need to do it here because we've got those settings. Then it will start to match your tone of voice by stripping out the things that you don't want by removing them. But also, you can give it loads of examples of the type of content that you want. For example, you could create a Word document or Google Doc, save it as a PDF of examples of your tone of voice, previous blog posts that you may have taken longer to write properly. Then make sure you've got loads of place names and examples so it can understand there's maybe issues with the transcript and then update them as you go through. So we've got an example here. I didn't start with asking it to write a blog post. That's the no-no here, because it's going to be the same old slop that you'll get with website owners who don't understand or don't really care about the quality of their content. It needs to be personal. It needs to be your content, but structured and written in a way that you've got a ghostwriter, someone who sat with you, who's potentially better writing than you are, with the right guidance, the right ideas and clever concepts. ChatGPT can be better than me on several occasions. It's more disciplined writing structure. And then we can bring in Grammarly later, which can help to refine that. Here's five reasons why this location. So I just put the website address in because it can research the website before being back with the responses. So we're going to get more personalized, more accurate content, as opposed to saying why mid Wales is a perfect winter getaway. If we just put a location, it will aggregate all of the content already available and it will come back with the same obvious responses. Whilst if you put it into the website content, it starts to become more specific. We tweaked a few of these as we went through the next process. And then I just asked it just to give me some bullet points. What I did then was move across into Otter AI and start recording a new node. So you can create an account with Otter. You can record either directly into the browser, as I did in this example on the call, or you can download the iOS or Android app and record into your phone. It means that you can take your content creation with you on the go. Thankfully, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I can go out for a walk and write a blog post in 10 or 15 minutes without the fear of everyone looking at me as if I'm really strange. What will then be created is this transcript. The next step, don't worry about saying things like now we're recording. We can see here that Koiti Bach, the Welsh spelling, hasn't translated in this. No problem, because by putting the website address in, we've primed it all ready. So I press record. We had a conversation, which was only three minutes long in total. That's all we needed for this article. And we got some of those points across, but we used the bullet points in ChatGPT as our prompts. When I write my own blog posts, I don't tend to worry about that now because I've been doing what I do for 20 years. So it's all second nature for me anyway. I just gotta make sure I don't go off on too much of a tangent. But in this case, because I'm working with a client and Vicky's only done this for the very first time today. So I anchored it and interviewed her. She gave the answers with a little bit of help from me as well. And we ended up with a transcript like this. So I haven't edited anything out of the transcript. I haven't updated any of the spellings. So here's the transcript, and then I put in brackets, correct my spellings, and rewrite in my tone of voice. Now, bear in mind, it's already got my tone of voice in ChatGPT. But what I could have done at the start instead with a free version is just saying, here's some examples of my tone of voice. Don't write anything yet. I've uploaded a document. It can then learn everything it needs to know about me within the discussion. And this is becoming less and less of an issue because ChatGPT is starting to learn, and there's a history option in here now. So with previous conversations, it will start to tighten it up. But if you want the best results at the moment, I'd recommend uploading that document at the start of each conversation. Then it wrote this. And you know what? It was pretty good. But it used words like cozy with a Z and the correct spelling in the UK is using C-O-S-Y instead of Z-Y. Also, it signed off with me because it thought I was writing this, not Vicky, because it doesn't know who said what in the transcript or not. Here. So I just came back with one very quick prompt. Rewrite this to UK English throughout, for example, cozy instead of cozy. Then I was able to take this and copy and paste it in. Instead of saying, imagine a world of blah, 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 blah. It's started off really good, some nice colorful language in here, but it stayed really true to the transcript that we created in Otter AI. So the next step was to bring this into Squarespace. And this is the final step. So there's two areas. We need to update the blog itself. So we added a new blog post. 
copied and pasted that into the title, the rest in place, and it actually picked up all of the heading styles as I wanted as well. We could actually spend more time and go into more detail on some of these posts, but we just wanted a simple blog post to start with, and then we added a button at the bottom for call to action. And we wanted to make that call to action not read more or book now. We wanted to make it specific to the content on the page. One call to action, really simple. And what we then do is by having Grammarly installed in Chrome, and we can see it's installed here at the top, it will go through and we made it sound less and less like ChatGPT by going with Grammarly's recommendations in most cases. I think that's an extra adjective that's not really needed if we wanted more economical prose in our content. But here, we're not going to worry too much about that because I quite like the word wonderfully, especially in this context. So we've removed a lot of these extra words that ChatGPT will put in throughout this post, but then I don't have to remove them all. So if I wanted to remove this, Grammarly will just allow us to do that. And if you're interested in paying for Grammarly, which will have more advanced grammar fixing as opposed to just typos and essentials, like the example here, if you wanted more help with structuring the sentences for better fit, then you're looking at the premium option, which is £120 a year UK prices or £25 a month. And it's really up to you whether you think you need to upgrade to that paid version. It's worth its weight in gold for me because of the amount of content I write. Some days you're just feeling lazy and you want it to fix it for you. But the free option, I'd recommend starting with that and see how you get on. There's another tool that I'd recommend if you've got a little bit of cash and you want to make things more efficient. We've got Text Expander, and this allows us to use keyboard shortcut combinations so we can store all of the prompts that we create, the prompt primers, store it as a keyboard shortcut. And then when you type in that key combination, you could, which you can memorize, it will then paste that text in accordingly. So we can do this for emails. We can do it for website content. I use it a lot for YouTube descriptions. And we can see most cases, we're probably looking at the individual one, which is 39.96 US dollars per month, probably about 32, 32 British pounds. Or you can pay monthly and it's just $4 a month. So that's the entire process. As I said, if you're interested in finding out more about how this process works from start to finish, you want a more guided route throughout. It's one of several options that I'm looking to create, probably a one hour mini course around. If you're interested, let me know and I'll see if I can squeeze it in the diary this side of the new year. Cheers.